Hey, what's up guys? So today we are going to make a crafting system by extending the previous tutorial on the inventory system. This was requested to me by this person right here. Shout out to him. So let's get started. So first let's see how I made it. So this is the crafting UI. As you can see, it's basically the right UI that we had earlier. I just duplicated it and then I just ensured that it forms a grid of 3x3 three three because this is how we will, we will be crafting in this game and then I've also added a re as you can see this is the result uh, this one is basically I just uh, duplicated the uh, card drag game object to make the result one and it's absolutely the same except that I did enable recast target and then I've added some recipes all right, as you can see, here are the recipe for a cracker, for instance. We need a blueberry here and here. For a chili, we need a cracker here and then three blue blueberries here. Uh, as you can see, this is the structural object. And then I also made a new kind of card crafting slot. Uh, as you can see, this is the crafting slot, which is basically a derived version of the normal slot as you can see they share a lot of similarities except for the fact that we have a little bit more parameters here and now if we wanted to add a new kind of recipe it's actually quite simple as you can see here is our crafting manager uh, which contains all the recipes that we have so if we want to add one we just right click and then we'll just uh, come here to crafting recipe and let's do blueberry blueberry and here we just initialize it uh, to the grid that we have so it's a three by three so three by three uh, like that and now this will return a blueberry and we could take in for instance uh, maybe a chili all right so if we now put this here and hit play we should be able to craft this so if we craft a chili uh, real quick so this is a cracker and now we take a chili here uh, if i do this as you can see we get a blueberry back all right and this works only if it's in the middle spot and final note for the result on the it on item taken we've had it called the crafting manager that finished crafting so it resets the grid so it actually consumes whatever item we have there yeah so here is the card recipe scriptual object as you can see here we just define a class uh, the crafting recipe which contains the crafting item row uh, as a list all right and then the actual result that we want to um, produce and here i just overloaded the operators so it's easier for us to just you know compare two recipe together and this is the crafting item row um, here we contain different columns all right uh, this is of type inventory item data which is basically the same type as our cards the item the data that our cards hold basically and again i just overrided operated the operators here and then these two gets referenced here in the scriptural object. Uh, the reason why I didn't use a scriptural object for this, instead I made a separate class, is because our crafting script, as we'll see later on, uh, will need to use this. And if we were to use a scriptural object, it might run in the editor. However, we cannot save to a scriptural object during runtime. So this would not work in an actual game. And now if we go ahead and look at the extension methods, uh, I just derived a static class called crafting extensions, which basically, as you could see in the previous slide, uh, has the match for both the item row and the crafting recipe. It's basically just loops all the rows and columns and just compares it, uh, that's it. And now moving on to the actual card manager script, we had to modify this one so as you can see this is the old version and in the new version i made all of these protected because we'll be using 
a card manager as a base clause for another clause later on and then I added the public unity event on item taken as well. Uh, we'll be using this to reset the grid later on. And then, uh, yeah, here as well, uh, this is in the card manager script. I also changed these methods. I made them virtual uh, for the set and unset item. Also, I did add a new void called reset slot. And then I also made the refresh display as being protected. Reason being we will be actually modifying these later on and the reason why I actually moved uh, the unset item logic to the reset slot method and then called it here is because we will be using this as you can see we are calling the on item taken event right here which is separate from when we just want to reset the uh, the actual slot itself without having to trigger anything all right so then this just decouples the logic a little bit now moving on to the crafting slot script as you can see here we just derive from the card manager and we add these two new values which is the vector to int to indicate which index it is and then the actual crafting manager that's responsible for all the crafting logic and then as you can see here we overridden the set and unset item um, it's actually the same exact thing as before However, the only new thing is the addition of line 25 and 35, which is just adding this, whichever item data we are passing in to the actual crafting manager, as you can see, crafting manager that add to crafting, position, item data, uh, this, and then false. This is basically if you are removing it or not. And now for the actual crafting manager, uh, as you can see, this has a list of all the recipes that we can have and we have a card manager for the result so we will be displaying whichever item we can craft uh, we also have a crafting recipe the current recipe so this keeps track of all the items in the crafting um, window if we want and this is all the slots that's available uh, this is automatic and dynamic that is it's only going to contain slots that has an item in it and here is the void craft as you can see uh, we get the recipe all right here we just get the recipe reset whichever reset the result slot that is because we want to you know just clear everything that we have in the result slot before proceeding and then recipe that is error in case we don't have any recipe we just end right here else we just set item whichever recipe we've got we set its um, outcome to the result slot and for those who don't know what this is such result uh, this is an item an asset sorry that I've made uh, as you can see we can import it using the redstone event game studio utilities I leave a link down below in the description box uh, for you to be able to download this asset from the asset store basically what it helps you with is here for instance we are not guaranteed that we will always find a recipe so one way of doing it would be to have this logic here but here instead but then if we had to you know uh, do the same logic 10 times we'll have to rewrite this 10 times this just makes it into a method and then you can just return it safely and as you can see here we just check if it is, if it is an error and then we get the error message uh, so we can just use the result here as you can see this is the whichever recipe we want and now for the last part of the script is the add to crafting and finish crafting uh, the add to crafting basically just takes whichever item we have and adds it to the recipe and also for the slots as well so as you can see here is the is removed and if we want to remove it we remove the current slot from the slots database as we just add it and then we call craft and this is finished crafting this is called once we have actually taken the item out of the result slot so as you can see this is all for the scripts so this is everything for the script so once you actually go ahead and um, initialize all of the variables and assign everything else 
you should get a system that works just like this. As you can see this works and we can just keep on adding a new recipe and this will just work as, it, as intended. And you could also just add more grids if you want just by modifying this here and also here the crafting one. But yeah, so that's about it. And I hope you guys found this, into, uh, this video interesting and helpful. If it did, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you have not already, and do feel free to leave a comment down below any queries or suggestions that you have. And on that note, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!